Mexico City, Mexico. Population, 19 and a half million. It is the 10th largest populated city in the world. Like many other large cities across the world, it faces problems with pollution. Mexico City started rapidly industrializing in the 1960s. With this industrialization came a huge influx of population. Mexico City's population problem became evident as early as 1985. Various newspaper articles brought up this problem. Problems ranged from birds dying in large numbers to people suffering from lead, copper, and mercury poisoning due to the polluted air. Even during the winter, the school day had been pushed to start at 10 a.m. instead of 8 a.m. The government hoped that the extra two hours would allow smog in the air to clear away before children went outside. At the time, however, the government took little action saying it was only a potential health problem. In most cities, pollution is able to escape since hot air rises and cold air sinks, allowing air to be circulated. However, the airborne particles of pollution do not have anywhere to go. To make the problem even worse, when the temperatures are low, a layer of cold air lies atop the pollutants, trapping them in the city. This is known as thermal inversion. Some of the main airborne pollutants include sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, carbon dioxide, as well as ozone, which is considered to be dangerous when at ground level. But there is yet another chemical that is also dangerous to the people living in the city. It is called PM10 of particulate matter. This particulate matter comes from anything from burning wood to laying in a new road, and it is more dangerous than ozone. While pollution problems were visible as early as 1986, Mexico City's problems persist today. What if you were a child growing up there? How healthy would you be? Health problems, particularly for the young and elderly, range from allergy-like effects to more serious illnesses such as asthma. However, not all hope is lost. The government has put programs in place that are believed to help remedy the city, such as ProAire and PICA. ProAire, and the three programs that have followed since, try to show the citizens of Mexico City more environmentally friendly ways to live than being generally aware of their surroundings. There are other initiatives as well, including educational programs in women's centers and schools. Communities are trying to learn what the pollution is about and how they can help. Although Mexico City has had a difficult fight with pollution for many years, there is hope for the future. While pollution cannot be rid of in its entirety, every little contribution helps.